Right, this is a very exciting bottle. This is a bottle of Ballantine's 17 year old bottled in the 1950s. Being a blend, it's a combination of the grain whiskies, different malt whiskies from all different areas of Scotland. So with blends, you don't really pick up much regional influence. Um, in terms of overall character of Ballantine's, would you say it's quite gentle, quite delicate? Yeah, yeah um, slightly fruity as well. Yeah. A little bit of maltiness in there, but yeah. Inoffensive. In inoffensive, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think in terms of the malt content, it's traditionally, I think it's Glenbergy they use a lot of, and Milton Duff, which are up in the sort of Speyside area. So some of those characteristic fruity, sweet notes come through. But as you say, it's very balanced, very smooth, very easy to drink. Now for a blended whiskey like this, what would you say are the key components of a, of a fantastic blend? You want to definitely be able to taste the malt in there uh, for okay. a start. Um, when it's 17 years old, you're going to want to taste some of that age in there as well. Um, you'd imagine that you are going to get multi notes, you're still going to get some fruity notes, there's a little bit of lightness from the green, um, but because this is such an old example, you're probably going to be tasting a lot more complexity because of the the um, the floor malting, basically, that, that would have been used. This would have been distilled in the 1940s. Yeah, it's um, a remarkable piece of history, and I think trying bottles from this era is, is fantastic. The whiskey industry back then was completely different place to, to what it is yeah. now. Yeah. You know, it wasn't run by by accountants as yeah. it is yeah. these days. So there was a greater use of this malt whiskey, you know, maybe a more generous aging, maybe more active cask. So yeah, really excited to try this one. Um, in terms of the age of this bottle, um, as I said, we think it's around 1950s. You can see on the label, um, the Ballantines brand says, was established in 1827 and has been in use on this label for over 125 years. So, quick bit of maths, we know that it's what, 1952? Yeah. Give or take. So yeah, 1950s, obviously style of the bottle, style of the capsule, all points that have been from, from that era. So yeah, really excited to try this and have, have a little taste. Okay, doke. So we will open this up just now, give it a little try. You'll notice on the capsule we have the uh, tax strip as well this particular expression was imported into the into the states to wisconsin in around the 1950s um, so we'll get rid of this and um, it does seem to be in good condition some of these older bottles do have a bit of deterioration and um, what we'll do we'll flip this over moisten the cork a little bit and hope that it doesn't Fingers rip in half and, oh, this is always the nerve-wracking bit so being an old bottle disaster, you can see cork split off, disintegrating in the top. Um, this is going to be, require a bit of fiddly work with a cork screw. Try and get the cork out. Try not to let it fall with, all over the table and into a liquid. Um, bottles of this age, it's not, not unusual. Um, you know, see the cork's been in there 60, 70 years plus. So yeah, yeah. if it's not been maintained, temperature changes this sort of disaster can happen. So let's salvage salvage what we can and have a nice nice little taste. Right, so let's give this lovely Ballantines a try. With it being an older bottle, had a bit of trouble getting the cork out. Might still be a few floaters left in, but <laughs> not, not, nothing that won't kill us. I'm sure we'll cork in rather than cork out. Yeah. Well, quite, exactly. Let's give this a little try. Cool. Right, let's have a little taste. Cheers, Jack. Thanks. Let's try this Ballantine's 17 see what you think. On the nose, what do you think? Any immediate impressions? A lot more malty than I'd anticipated. A lot of... Mm. A bit of sherry influence as well. Yeah, I think... Really rich. Yeah, I'm, I've tried the sort of more recent bottlings of Ballantine's and it's very subtle. And it's not got that depth of complexity mm -hmm. that this one does. Um, as we said, very... Typical of blends from this era, huge malt content, as you say, strong sherry cask influence as well. So yeah, no yeah. smells if, absolutely delicious. If you told me that was a single malt, I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Let's give it a try and see if it tastes, it tastes like a single malt. Now, for me, straight away, I think on the palate, you can, would you say it? You can tell it's a blend. It's very smooth. See, single malts often have that harshness, that it's like wild nature to it sometimes. But this is very yeah, moderate. Yeah, there was a tiny hint of pepperiness up front, but it's mm. dissipated very quickly. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pleasant drop. Uh, this one is, is 86 US proof, uh, which equates to 43%. Uh, ABV as we know it in, in the UK. Um, so not too strong, not too fiery, a little bit of a finish, um, kind of lingering, slightly warming, but no harshness or no. rough edges for me, no. but you know, it's a lovely drop. Yeah, delicious. Yeah, I think this particular one, it does show the difference in older blends in relation to modern day blends. It's got a lovely amount of flavour to it. As you said, if you gave this to somebody who perhaps hasn't had too many whiskies before. It's got enough character to keep them interested, mm -hmm. but none of that harshness or any peatiness or anything that some people get scared yeah, yeah, by, yeah. by single malts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, what would you say about this one? Thumbs up? Thumbs up, definitely impressed. Yeah, it's a lovely drop. Um, hopefully have this one, have this one again. Mm -hmm.